Quick intro. Any classification is based on certain criteria. For example, by sex, people are divided, classified, into males and females. By having a cat, people are divided into those who have a cat and those who don't. By height, people can be divided into groups based on how tall they are. For example, one group from 150 to 159.9 centimeters, another group from 160 to 169.9 centimeters, and so on. The same object can fall into an unlimited number of classifications. Take my friend Rajiv, for example. Rajiv is a male. Rajiv has a cat. Rajiv's height is 165 centimeters. Let's get back to software testing and classify the most important types of it. The first criteria is based on knowledge of the internals of the software. Here we have three types. Black box testing, white box testing, gray box testing. Black box testing. Imagine a soda vending machine. If you want a can of Coke, you insert money into the machine and get your soda. Nothing fancy. Now, here's another perspective. The coins that you insert into the machine are input. The soda is an output. The buttons to select type of soda and the slot where you insert your coins are the user interface, UI. The internals of the vending machine is like a black box because you have a vague or no idea about the specific mechanism that exchanges coins for soda. With regard to software, the black box or area of unknown is simply the software back end. From a black box testing perspective, the back end can be thought of as a virtual bridge that connects input and output. There are two main things about black box testing. One, the tester usually has no idea about the internals of the back end. Two, ideas for testing come from expected or actual patterns of user behavior. Let's look into the details. One, the tester usually has no idea about the internals of the back end. On the one hand, the tester has an advantage over the programmer, the author of the back-end code. Why? It's human nature to see desired things as reality. The programmer wants to see his code working. Every parent thinks that his child is the smartest and the most talented. The code is the child of a programmer, and in his reality, the programmer often perceives his code as a problem-free creature. The black box tester has no bond with the code and a tester's perception is very simple. Code has bugs. Using the principle, ask and you shall receive, black box testers find bugs where programmers don't. But on the other hand, black box testing is like a walk in a dark labyrinth without a flashlight because the tester doesn't know how the back end was actually constructed. That's why there are situations when a black box tester writes many test cases to check something that can be tested by only one test case. Some parts of the back end are not tested at all. Therefore, black box testing has the advantage of an unaffiliated opinion on the one hand and the disadvantage of blind exploring on the other. 2. Ideas for testing come from expected or actual patterns of user behavior. What we've been calling steps is a combination of three things, actions, data, and conditions, combined together to achieve an actual result. Example, look at this test case. 1. Go to www.sharelane.com. 2. Type the word expectations into the search text field. 3. Click the search button. Expected web page with the book Great Expectation Loads. Steps 1 through 3 inclusively are actions. The test expectations is the data. If the scenario assumes that book is in the DB, then the condition is the DB has data about a book with the word expectations in its title. A scenario is a combination of actions and data applied to software under certain conditions. The purpose of a scenario is to bring test execution to the point where an actual result can be retrieved and compared with an expected result. The pattern of a user's behavior is a scenario, or a set of scenarios, that reflects how customers use or will use our software. How can we figure out patterns of user behavior? A. We can take them from the spec. 
For example, the PM can assume that some users will enter an email address with two at characters. B. We can figure them out by exploring. When you browse your website, you can imagine what a regular user would do. C. We can develop scenarios by using a black box methodology. We'll cover this extensively later on. D. Scenarios can be a gift from our intuition. You can just wake up in the middle of the night and think, what if a user did that? We think that intuition is one of the greatest assets that software tester might have. E. The PM or programmer might give you some valuable ideas. F. We can look at the log files or reporting tools to see how users already use our software. G. Our customer support can share with us how customers use our software. H. We can also find info about actual usage from forums, etc. Let's do a quick recap about conceptual issues regarding black box testing. The black box approach assumes that the tester usually doesn't know how the back end was written, so ideas for testing come from expected or actual patterns of user behavior. Here's another illustration of black box approach. Example, here is the item 5.1 from the spec number 2233. 5.1, if a user adds 20 to 49 books inclusively to the shopping cart, we will offer a 2% discount. Now do this. 1. Create a new account on ShareLane and log in. 2. Add any book to the shopping cart. 3. Click the shopping cart link. 4. Change the number of books to 20. 5. Click the Update button. 6. Check the value under the Discount column. Expected result? 2. We just performed black box testing by executing a scenario where a user adds 20 books to the shopping cart. The expected result was 2, but is the code really bug-free? We'll see it soon. White box testing. White box testing, also known as glass box testing, clear box testing, and open box testing, encompasses a number of testing techniques that requires a comprehensive understanding of the software code. For example, a programmer can perform white box testing by comparing the requirements from the spec, a piece of Python code from ShareLane. In real life, white box testing usually exists in the form of unit testing performed by the programmer against his own code. Do you want to perform some white box testing now? Let's do it. Example, here again is the item 5.1 from the spec number 2233. 5.1, if user adds 20 to 49 books inclusively to the shopping cart, we will offer a 2% discount. Now, let's do this. 1. Go to Test Portal, Application, Source Code, Shopping Cart.py. 2. Click the Bug 1 link under the View Bug section. Here is what we see. Programmer Billy used Q as a variable to hold the value of the quantity of books added to the shopping cart. In human language, the expression means, if the quantity of books is greater than or equal to 12, and it is also less than or equal to 49, then the discount should be equal to 2. Congratulations, we just found a bug using the white box testing approach. Billy made a mistake by writing 12 instead of 20. What is the bug summary? Spec 2233 shopping cart.py 12 instead of 20 was given as lowest limit for a 2% discount. Let's file the bug into our bug tracking system.
During black box testing, we used 20 as an input and it was a legitimate scenario. But we didn't find a bug. We would have found a bug if we had tried 19, a value that was not mentioned in spec. That brings us to very important conclusions. 1. If we simply develop test scenarios using direct ideas from the spec, we will create legitimate test cases. But those test cases won't necessarily be effective bug finders. The job of the PM is to describe how the feature should work, not how the feature should be tested. In other words, the PM develops use cases, not test cases. Brain positioning. A use case is a description of how software will be or is being used, how software should respond to certain scenarios. Example, here is an example of a use case. During login, if a user submits the wrong password, an error message, oops, invalid username or password should be displayed. A functional spec often includes a collection of use cases. Use cases and test cases are similar because they share the same concept. A certain scenario should lead to a certain expected result. Use cases and test cases are different because the purpose of a test case is to find a bug, while the purpose of a use case is to describe how the software should respond to a user actions. A test case is used to test the software, while a use case is used to describe the software. The real power in finding bugs is invoked when we use the professional body of knowledge known as the black box testing methodology. The value of 19 originates as a test idea because we used the special black box testing technique called boundary values. Keep studying and you'll soon become an expert in many cool testing techniques. 2. Black box testing and white box testing are a great combination that helps to find bugs by improving test comprehensiveness by checking the software from different angles. Test coverage. Let's make a quick stop and talk about test coverage in detail. Quick stop. Test coverage. Imagine a chessboard with 64 squares with a white king on one of the squares. Each possible position of the king on the board is written on a separate card in the form of an instruction. For example, move white king to E2. There should be a set of 64 cards to cover all the possible positions. If we start moving the king using the positions specified on our cards, then after all cards are used, we will achieve 100% of the possible positions of the white king on the chessboard, 100% execution of the given instructions. Now, imagine that the chessboard is so big that the number of squares is incalculable. Let's also imagine that, according to some logic, we selected 20 positions and wrote them down on 20 cards. Can 20 cards cover 100% of the possible positions of the white king on the chessboard? No, but can we achieve 100% execution of the given instructions? Yes. Now, back to software testing. The term test coverage means one of the following based on the context. 1. The coverage of possible scenarios. 2. Test case execution coverage. For the coverage of possible scenarios, we have two situations. A. Usually, the number of possible scenarios is incalculable. Thus, we usually don't really know the exact percentage of possible scenarios that we are going to cover by our testing. B. In some cases, the number of possible scenarios is calculable, especially when we narrow down our testing to a small, isolated piece of the software. In those cases, as we prepare test cases, we might confidently name the percentage of possible scenarios to be covered during our testing. In both situations, the coverage of possible scenarios is improved if we add a valid, unique test case, a test case that checks possible scenario, does not duplicate another test case. When we talked about how the black box, white box combo helps to improve test coverage, we also talked about improving the coverage of possible scenarios. It's much simpler with test case execution coverage. We always know how many test cases we have and how many of them have been executed. So, when you are asked about test coverage, ask what the person means. 
the coverage of possible scenarios or test case execution coverage. Gray box testing. We consider gray box testing the most effective approach to software testing. Gray box testing combines the elements of black and white box testing. On the one hand, the tester uses black box methodology to come up with test scenarios. On the other hand, the tester possesses some knowledge about the back end and he actively uses that knowledge. By the way, do you remember the test case with the credit card? We did DB verification, meaning that we used knowledge of the back end for our testing. That was a typical example of the gray box approach. Below are two things to conclude our quick intro to black, white, and gray box testing. One, during black box testing, the tester's actions are not limited to actions that can be performed by the users. For example, share lane testers use Credit Card Generator, Test Portal Helper's Credit Card Generator, to generate a credit card for testing. Obviously, users don't have access to our internal test tools. 2. One of the most critical things to keep in mind while doing black, white, or gray box testing is to come up with expected results that serve as true indicators of whether the software works or not. Please pay attention to this. Example. In the test case with credit card, we checked the DB value. We did that because the true indication that the credit card transaction was successful was reflected as a second digit in the result column of the table CC transactions. For example, in the case of a successful Visa transaction, the value must equal 10. Why is this a true indicator? Because if the transaction is successful, the credit card processor sends us a success code that equals zero. We can say, we use the gray box approach because we use DB verification. If we used a pure black box approach, we would only be able to verify that as a result of successful checkout, a user gets the confirmation page with an order ID. Will that confirmation page be a legitimate expected result? Yes, it is an expected result that makes sense. But would it be a true indicator that the credit card transaction was successful? No. Again, it does make sense to check if the confirmation page is displayed. In the test case with the credit card, we did that indirectly because we got an order ID from that page. But a true confirmation of the success of the transaction can only be retrieved from the DB. That's why we are such strong believers in the gray box approach. It provides more opportunities to find those expected results that serve as true indicators of whether the software works or not. Lesson recap. 1. Black box, gray box, and white box testing are three approaches based on the knowledge of the internals of the system. 2. Black box testers usually have no idea about the internals of the back end, implement ideas for testing that come from expected or actual patterns of user behavior. 3. Black box testing has the advantage of an unaffiliated opinion on the one hand and the disadvantage of blind exploring on the other. 4. During black box testing, the tester's actions are not limited to actions that can be performed by the users. For example, testers can use helpers for semi-automated testing. 5. Expected patterns of user behavior can be figured out with the help of the spec, exploring, black box methodology, intuition, communication, other sources. 6. Actual patterns of user behavior can be found with the help of reporting data, data from customer support, info from forums, blogs, etc. 7. White box testing, also known as glass box testing, clear box testing, and open box testing, encompasses a number of testing techniques that require a comprehensive understanding of the software code. White box testing is usually done by a programmer against his own code. 8. If a test case checks a legitimate scenario, it doesn't mean that it's well designed to find a bug. The real power in finding bugs is invoked when we use the professional body of knowledge known as the black box testing methodology. 9. Black box testing and white box testing are a great combination that helps to find bugs by improving test comprehensiveness, which is checking the software from different angles. Test coverage. 10. Depending on context, 
Test coverage means either the coverage of possible scenarios or test case execution coverage. 11. In the case of gray box testing, on the one hand, the tester uses black box methodology to come up with test scenarios. On the other hand, the tester possesses some knowledge about the back end and he actively uses that knowledge. 12. During black box testing, the tester's actions are not limited to actions that can be performed by the users. 13. One of the most critical things to keep in mind while doing black, white, or gray box testing is to come up with expected results that serve as true indicators of whether the software works or not.